Good morning. I'm going to tell you about some of the highlights through using some books. So let me show you these books. All nicely lined up. This spring, I started going to college, and I switched colleges, so I'm not going to tell you the name of the college because it's the internet and I don't really want stalkers, but suffice to say that at this college, I had a class, an elective, about C.S. Lewis, who's going to see in science fiction. It helped me analyze more of like the themes inside of the Chronicles of Narnia in particular, which I hadn't reread in a while. As that semester was finishing up, the spring semester, I read this book, The Death of Ivan Illich, from I guess maybe Ivan Illich, and this was a recommendation from Sunday. It was really good. I liked it because of how honest it was. Um, the whole story is brilliant. I can't, like, he wrote such a wonderful work in how many pages? A hundred and... 134 pages. It's... I mean, it's about a man who dies, and about the process leading up to that, and about the hypocrisy of the people around him, and about how we just come face to face with, like, hard things in life. We can't put on facades. Along that time, I also read this book, Word by Bird, which is the bomb. This book was given to me by Thursday, and I read it during a similar time when I was feeling kind of depressed. And I loved it because Anne Lamott's point, or one of her points, is that writing is like empathy and it helps. Writing is valuable because it reaches people in our solitude, in our aloneness, and in just like the sufferings of life. I'll tell you about this one next, The Hiding Place. I actually haven't read this whole book, but I'm choosing it to talk to you about because it's written by Cory Ten Boom, who is basically the patron saint, if I may put it that way. Of it's basically like a sorority at my school, but not a sorority at all. So there's like 30 or 40 girls at my school who are all in this um, house. It's a metaphorical house that is named after Cory Ten Boom. I think that these people are awesome. I have been loving going to school. So I'm very hopeful for the kind of things I'm going to learn about being a true human being and getting to learn about that through other people. Also this semester, I read this book, Sin, Pride, and Self-Acceptance. One of the things that stuck out to me is this book's analysis on perfectionism. It says, perfectionists tend to be letter of the law people, even when they unconsciously know they do not live up to this standard. Any notion of grace or unmerited favor seems extremely suspicious to them. People are in charge of their own destinies and hence get what they deserve. Having perfectionist standards thus provides two important elements, A, being superior to others, and B, controlling life. This summer, I worked at Subway which it was a good it was a good job. I guess my pride made it me feel like I was being kind of degraded by working at minimum wage and I just felt like, oh, I don't want to do this the rest of my life. But I'd been kind of convincing myself that well I need to be content and if this is what God has for me then like that's the just the best that there is. So I was in a kind of struggle, which is something that this book talks about. They call it anxiety. Basically this conflict between natural finitude and our desire for transcendence. So I was feeling this a lot in the summer. People would give me advice and tell me, well, you don't just do what you want to do and pursue your dreams. And if you want to have an interesting, exciting life, then you have to reach out for it. Like just this book was saying, perfectionist people are in charge of their own destinies. Well, <laughs> that brings me to this last book, The Christian Life. It's been a theme which has been kind of beaten like a dead horse throughout this whole year, I guess, almost this whole year, about my questions, how do you seek God while remaining content? And do we need that fear to drive us to find happiness? Will we be shortchanged if we just have contentment in God? Oh, my hair is falling out. <laughs> okay, just ignore Ah, oh, here it is. Um, we were visiting some friends a couple months ago. I was asking this question because I have a tendency to ask people my questions. 
and we talked about it a little bit. And they recommended me this book, and they actually gave it to me, which was very sweet of them. No matter what choices you make, God is still sovereign. God loves us. He wants the best for us. 